Coming right up, a special edition of Straight Talk, Leadership in Tough Times, the University with CSULB President F. King Alexander. A special thank you to our special edition sponsor. Opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Charter Communications nor its sponsors. We recognize our obligation to present opposing points of view by responsible spokespersons. For information, please contact the director of program. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. So raise the banner, call the glory, let us join our fellow man. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Long Beach Magazine. Coastal living, city style. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We're delighted you're joining us for our second show of our 17th season. We're focusing on leadership in tough times. Last week we had the mayor on and we're very honored to have as our guest for the whole show Tonight, the president of California State University, Long Beach, Dr. F. King Alexander. Mr. Prez, welcome to our show. Thank you. It's great to be back, Art. Budget times are tough for the university. They're tough. And uh, actually, we're once again, we're moving into another academic year. We're two months into our fiscal year, and we don't have a state budget. Uh, so we're... <laughs> We're we're looking at the trying to predict what's going to happen this year. It's really it's really outrageous. The state legislature is dysfunctional. They're not doing their job. Well, thirty five percent of our budget basically is held hostage, and we have no idea this year when we're going to know more about it. Um, I'd say the greatest saving grace in all this is that uh, we know that there are federal penalties to cutting us again, that we helped get written into federal language in the economic stimulus packages. The so-called maintenance of effort. Maintenance of effort provision. So we, we sit somewhere between the governor restoring our budget, about 35 percent restoration of our budget, which he's proposed, uh, and zero, where we think that uh, because they can't necessarily cut us without giving back hundreds of millions of dollars in federal stimulus dollars. So uh, it may be that uh, there will be no more cuts than have already taken place. Well, last October, we, we were staring down the barrel of some pretty massive cuts. In fact, we took a 23% budget reduction, and that was three months into our budget year last year. So uh, if it wasn't for the saving grace of our faculty and our staff taking uh, furloughs and basically cutting their pay 10%, agreeing to cut everybody's pay to save jobs yes. and save classes, we would, we would not be able to have made it last year. And the trustees uh, voted to raise student fees another 5% this year. They did, and uh, uh, over the summer we had a 5% increase with the promise from the legislature that uh, with a new budget there would also be that the legislature would buy out another 5%. If the legislature doesn't do that, then we'll have, we'll have to resort to raising it. You know, it's really time. outrageous because uh, your system, uh, Cal State system, school districts, counties, you know, everyone's dependent for their budget on the on the state budget yeah. and the state which by law by by constitution has to have the budget in place by july one is now well over sixty days late they're not doing their job well uh, th that's certainly been the case for the last four years we've been ha we've had to predict we're gamblers i guess we've had to gamble on what the state might do to us uh... 
well into the school year. So we've got students on campus needing classes. We've got faculty and staff working very hard and diligently to make sure our students are getting what they require to have a good collegiate experience. But we're without 35% of our budgets is being held hostage. Let's talk about the impact of these cuts on enrollment and on classes. Well, the impacts have hit enrollment pretty hard. Um, we were at our all-time height 38,100 three years ago. Uh, because the state has pulled out about one out of every, they've, they've knocked us from being an institution that's 40% that's funded by the state down to an institution that's roughly about 30% funded by the state. So we've had to reduce our enrollment to 33.9. Roughly 4,000, over 4,000 students have lost access to our campus. And the difficulty in this is it's happened at a time when demand has never been higher. Uh, we, unemployment. Unemployment, uh, the fact that we received 70, over 70,000 applications for fall admission. Our and, campus is hot. 70,000 people wanted 6,000 places. Under your right. leadership, this has become the hottest campus in the 23, 24 well, campuses in, in the CSU in fact, system. That, that over 70,000 application uh, is it places us third in the United States in the number of applications. Really? Mm -hmm. It's harder to get in here than UCLA. I'm not saying it's a better school, but statistically, it's harder to get in. Well, unfortunately, that, that, that's, that's true because we, are, we want to remain accessible. Um, what we charge, there are only, actually, there are only two universities nationwide that have 15,000 or more students that charge less than we do. So we're incredibly affordable, we're accessible, but I, feel, I do feel bad for the seniors and juniors. They're the ones losing access at a time when the state ought to be providing the type of resources yeah. to give them and get them greater access. And we were voted again best in the West in the we're US among, News. We're among the five best public universities in the, in the, on the Western seaboard in the West Coast. And that, and that measures from Texas all the way to California and why. I know fundraising is an important element in your strategic thinking. and. Uh, at convocation, it was announced uh, we had a very good year this past year. Well, this is the third straight year. We, when, when I came, we were raising about $20 million a year. Um, despite the economic troubles that we've dealt with and the fact that many people have been, they've, they've kept their resources much closer to the hip and, and in their bank accounts, we've raised our expectations. So we raised almost, we raised $30 million this past year. Versus uh, 20 the year before? Well, Four years ago, we were raising 20 a year. For the last three years in a row, we've, we've raised 30 million a year. 30 year. So uh, we've raised our, our fundraising. Our endowment is approaching 40 million for the first time in its history. Uh, we need to get our endowment up. We need to go from being a 30 million dollar a year to a 40 million and keep setting our expectations higher and higher. What's your vision for the future? Where should ultimately the role of public funding, private funding, and student fees shake down? Well, it's a balance. It depends where California wants. And the problem is the balance has been uh, abandoned by the, generally the public at large because if we're going to be among the most affordable in the country, then the flip side of that, then we need to be among the most supported. A state like North Carolina has done a good job keeping that balance much better than we have. Now we are below the national average in what we get from the state, yet we're still the most affordable. So we're spending less on our students than generally almost everybody in the United States. And the question is, how long can we continue to be among the most efficient while also providing the type of degrees that society needs? You mentioned earlier that student fees are now about 30% of the total cost. That seems to many of us to be about right. If a student pay or his family pays one third of the total cost, and the taxpayers or others pay two-thirds, that seems to have a nice balance. Well, the, the problem is the taxpayers used to pay two-thirds. Now the taxpayers pay a third. So well, Where's uh, the other third coming it from? It comes from whatever our fundraising, our federal research grants, our, our auxiliary funding, whatever we can do to piece it together. I see. And uh, virtually that means that our per-student expenditures are not keeping pace with the type of per-student expenditures that our peers around the country are dealing with. Okay, we'll be back in a moment, but first we have to pause for these messages. Stay with us.